the cable bill. There's a little 5% that is, is at the bottom of the bill uh, that, that goes to the town of Cape Elizabeth, and it, I think it says franchise fee on it. Uh, the check today it came in, it was for a little over $154,000. So, it, you know, it, one, it shows that those amounts uh, add up. Uh, secondly, we, we had budgeted in, in next year's budget 125000 figuring last year we got 144000 We thought the economy, maybe people aren't getting as many premium channels, maybe, uh, you know, people going to satellite television, all these things. Well, t you know, Time Warner apparently is holding their business. Uh, as I said, last year was 144000 this year it's 154,000. Yes, some cable rates have increased, uh, but overall it's good. They have, interestingly enough, 3,200 customers here in Cape Elizabeth uh, that do receive service in Time Warner Cable. Our franchise fee is based on the basic service, the pay service, the installation fees, the equipment charges, and even more if people buy things on the home shopping networks, we get a percentage of the cut of, this was something we had negotiated, of what, uh, the sales are in Cape Elizabeth. We also, last time negotiated, we get a cut of the advertising. Uh, so when you see those, those ads you don't like that sometimes interrupt the programming uh, on the various cable channels, uh, we do actually get a cut out of that. 5% uh, of the revenues that Time Warner gets proportion to Cape Elizabeth. So anyway, it's, it's 154,000. The, the good news is 125,000 was, was in the budget as a revenue for next year. And you know what I think with pulling out of the economy, that's probably an amount that might be able to be bumped up a little when we meet as the Finance Committee. So that was good news. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Mike. Uh, we turn to the minutes from our February 14, 2011 meeting. Is there a motion? Ann? Move to accept. Second. second. Motion's been made and seconded. Any discussion? All those in favor? Oh, Jessica. It's just a tiny typo on page six. Um, uh, the first paragraph. There shall be 72 hour weekly close season and no fish shall be taken, I'm sure is what is intended there. <clears throat> oh, it's, it's tiny. Oh, That's sure. That's all. Yep. Did you see that, Deborah? I'll accept, oh, I'll accept that as a friendly so. amendment. Okay. <laughs> okay. So, motion be made and seconded with that amendment. Uh, any further discussion? All those in favor? Thank you. Um, okay, Mike is dimming the lights. Turn to item number 57-2011, the fiscal year 2012 budget. And Mike, you have a PowerPoint? Very brief. All right. I'll try to keep brief. Thank you. Thank you, Deb. As Sarah Lennon mentioned a few uh, minutes ago, the town council is beginning its process of reviewing the, the municipal budget. Uh, is it Wednesday night, Sarah? on Wednesday night and uh, beyond there. I thought I'd give a brief overview and introduction of the budget and where it stands. Uh, overall, the budget's up a little bit more than $350,000. That's 4.2% increase, a little bit more than we're used to. And it's interesting, as you look at the school budget, it's, it's a full 2% more than the school budget, something uh, that uh, is of interest and uh, is not typical of what we've seen probably in the last 10 to 20 years. Uh, the, the reason the municipal budget is up, if, if you look at the heading on this, it, it's, in my view, trying to take care of assets. I've also referred to it as stewardship for, you know, what the, the taxpayers are responsible in the town, what the town's responsible for. 75% uh, of the increase could be attributable simply to added maintenance for the fort, uh, for a lot of our buildings, and for uh, about 100,000 more additional that's proposed to be spent in replacement of equipment and road work and the other things that's in the capital improvement section of the budget. Uh, part, one of our key assets is our employees. The, uh, the budget provides for a 2% increase. When you add all the different benefits in, the, you know, the effect of Social Security, of retirement contributions, all together it adds up to $91,000. If you look at the, the 356 to 57,000 increase in spending, just those two things alone would, would equate, if they were the only things going up and down in the budget, to 100% of the increase. Uh, you know, what are some of the different things that are being done? In the, the Fort Williams, the sort of the plan that was developed uh, for this past year, of, of, after the, the citizen vote on fees, 
there, there was a sense of, and there was a lot of talk that the town needs to do more to take care of the park. Uh, one of the reasons for having proposed fees was recognizing there were needs for the park that needed to be addressed. Uh, this, the money specifically, uh, there's an extra $83,000 in the park uh, budget proposed for this coming year. is specifically to go to the stone walls, uh, one section along Shore Road, as well as particularly up around uh, the, the, the old tennis court and the old basketball court that's more or less fallen apart across from the park's maintenance building. Uh, there's an effort to repave some roads. Most of them will be in Shore Acres. Uh, there's monies proposed. Uh, we try to do a drainage project every couple of years. There's uh, proposed to do one on Oakhurst Road. We've had some continuing issues. I know the council's got some emails on it over the years. And then there's some, uh, if you look at Starboard Drive, which is down off at the intersection of Scott Dyer and Spurwing, uh, right near the intersection, uh, that was built in the, the mid-70s and didn't have a proper base and fallen apart. And this is the beginning of some civil engineering to figure out what to do about the drainage so that we don't get a road where the water's popping up through it uh, and causing it to break up all the time. Uh, some of the, the other things, uh, it's, you know, people wonder how many police cruisers do you replace in a year. There's one proposed in this budget. Uh, is, we have a night, one of our oldest pieces of equipment, a 1970 road grader. It's the one that keeps Route 77 ice and scrapes it, you know, right to the, the surface. Uh, we're proposing to replace that with a used piece of equipment that we expect to pay about $140,000 for. A used grader, you know, could be up over $300,000. Uh, excuse me, a new one. The used one's proposed uh, uh, for $140,000. Uh, the fire responders, when they go into fire calls, have to have self-contained breathing apparatus that actually fit, uh, you know, the face mask. Those, those, uh, it's $85,000 for 18 of them. Uh, they're not cheap, they need to be fitted, they need to be on the right trucks, uh, and it's proposed to replace 18 of them. The Tossmire Library is going to be, I think, one of your challenging issues in this budget. Uh, there's, there's a bunch of proposals that came from the facilities director to invest actually about $133,000 just in maintenance of the building, everything from boilers to energy improvements to replacing boarding that's going. And I cut that back to 100,000 with the things still to be chosen. But what, what I really would recommend is that we work to cut that back to 50 just to keep the building going uh, with the plan that uh, we're gonna be doing something major with the library in, in a few years. But even then, there's things that need to be done and should be done just to keep it running for the period of time you know, it's probably at least two to three years off before we, we do something. But that's, I, you know, I look forward to that discussion. That should be a really interesting discussion when you get to that as, as uh, how much resources you want to put into the library and what direction you wish to apply them to. You know, another uh, building that hasn't got any, uh, much of anything done on it the last few years is the Cape Cottage Fire Station. Uh, it's leaking all the time in, onto the equipment, the roof. Uh, it'd be 24000 to fix that. We don't, the staff does not see in the short term any savings from going to South Portland and will it and, and forcing the issue to build a whole new station there. We see this as, as more economical and again, something we look forward to discussing with you and, and uh, with the community. Uh, there are some savings uh, in the budget. One is we're eliminating uh, in, in, in the front tax office a position that was half time. We're also taking, there were two clerical positions upstairs in the Assistant Codes Planning Office. One of those two positions is going to have to spend one third of their time down in the tax office to help with different projects. But overall, you know, folks say, what are you doing as a result of, you know, the online things that, that uh, Deborah just mentioned, as well as lesser business. And this is, this is addressing the fact that things aren't as busy, although we, we still remain very nervous during peak times of not having enough uh, assistance, particularly when people are on vacation, someone's out sick. Uh, you know, we collect, you know, over $30 million a year through the counter, and when you're collecting those amounts of money, you want to be giving good service. Uh, you don't want people to come and find out that they can't be helped because there's no one there. Uh, we're also continuing to save in debt expense. Uh, over the last two years from recycling, it's, it's the, the, the fees we pay to Equal Maine have gone down about $100,000. It was uh, almost 70 thousand last year and 23,000 this year and that's as a result primarily of citizens using the silver bullets uh, to uh, to recycle the, 
the actual savings in the domain fees in the budgets uh, about twenty three five uh, we withdrew from the main state retirement system uh, back about fifteen twenty years ago but we still have fifty five retired employees who are on the plan forty eight municipal seven school this included custodians included people that worked for public works years and years ago the library here at the town hall and because of the decline in the stock market a couple of years ago we, we are like many other communities they're asking us now to contribute to that plan uh, and originally asked for ninety nine thousand we went back and forth with them and this was the amount after they had their actuary look at it again uh, what they've told me is that it's supposed to be funded over fourteen years the unfunded actuarial liability although the the actual unfunded actuarial liability is seven times that amount so I I still don't get it ought to be you know half that but regardless I don't think it really hurts us to to be to be paying that system and ensuring that it's fully funded and of course you know the last week hasn't been too good the stock market generally has has improved since July of 2010 when the last uh, numbers are based upon uh, unemployment this is one number that doesn't follow the same track the total is 25,000 the increase in this year's budget is 51 percent from what it was last year or 80 or 8500 dollars that primarily as a result still of the dispatch uh, consolidation we, we we ran into some expenses you, you might expect uh, with unemployment compensation uh, particularly for one individual and also getting hit indirectly and I've, I've, I've got the person that handles our unemployment insurance at Maine Municipal looking into it of, as a result of the, of the continuations and help in unemployment insurance there were, uh, for whatever reason we're getting hit with those and I thought stimulus monies were paying for them but we're checking that out we had also as a result of good worker safety records we're saving about nine thousand in workers comp uh, overall in th this budget the municipal tax rates up five cents that's fifteen dollars to someone who owns a three hundred thousand dollar home if you look at it from fiscal year 2009 which is began July 1 2008 when the recession began and you know the, the, I think the answer is what have you done in re, you know and what, what's happened with taxes in response to the recession and the other activities the municipal uh, it's up a penny from what it was in 09 to what it's proposed in uh, fiscal year 12 that means that the $300,000 homeowner in 2009 would have paid $1,215 for all their municipal services now it's it's Twelve thousand, excuse me, twelve hundred eighteen dollars. Uh, so I, I wanted to really spell that out so the three dollars wasn't confused with a tax rate increase or something like that. We're actually talking three, three dollars, uh, two cups of coffee. Uh, is uh, oh, actually coffee's gone down in prices. Good sales around town. Uh, maybe three cups of coffee uh, is is what the increase uh, has been in uh, the property tax or would be under this proposed budget. Uh, you know, personnel is, is half the budget now. Sometimes that's been up as high as 55 percent. I don't think it's ever down to 50. My goal is to try to keep it between 50 and 52 because what I find is if we put too much into personnel, then we're getting into a problem like we got into. We weren't really taking care of our other assets. Uh, and there needs to be a balance between, between that and everything else that we do. As you can see, uh, debt service is 11 percent of the budget continues to decline a little bit. There's a lot of attention on, you know, because of the cost of fuel. We budgeted everything at three dollars a gallon uh, for this coming year. Who knows? Uh, the the uh, crude oil futures are all over the place. It, the increase in the budget for utilities, fuel, and heat's forty about forty-five thousand dollars this year, or about six percent from uh, the uh, five hundred thousand or so that it was uh, in the current budget. Uh, the monies, what the real killer here for local taxpayers is you, you look property tax is 62 percent excise tax is 18 to fund the municipal budget fully 80 percent of it comes from taxation that that you know you really have to pay uh, you don't have much choice uh, the state contributes about eight percent you know as you, you saw earlier in different reports that was about 15 or 16 percent back a few years ago uh, the amount proposed to come from surplus is up a little bit as a result of uh, you know, good results last year you know the, the whole discussion this past year with uh, you know no one wanted to see Fort Williams fees or at least whatever the, the vote was uh, a great majority didn't want to see Fort Williams fees nor did they want to see pay per bag and as a result only three percent of the budgets funded with user fees you know 
the, the pie, yes, some expenses can go up or down depending on the needs and